So it is now um, my honor to introduce the governor of the great state of West Virginia, Governor Jim Justice. As <clears throat> Governor is a graduate of Marshall University with a master's degree in business administration. He joined his family business in 1976. His farming businesses, as we now know, make him the largest farmer east of the Mississippi. Prior to being elected governor, he was president and CEO of 102 different companies. Governor Justice has spent his entire career creating jobs and putting people to work. So isn't it appropriate he's here at our business summit? In 2009, Governor rescued the Greenbrier Resort, and he, he has brought major events to the Greenbrier, including fantastic things that give great publicity for the state of West Virginia, such as the Greenbrier Classic, the NFL practice teams, and the NBA training camps. Governor Justice and his wife, Kathy, celebrated their 40th wedding anniversary last year. They have two children, Jay Justice, who runs the Justice Family Coal and Agricultural Operations, and Dr. Jill Justice, who is president of the Greenbrier Hotel Corporation and practice medicine at the Greenbrier Clinic. In November 2016, Jim Justice was elected as our 36th governor. I've known Jim Justice for a number of years. In fact, he's a great competitor and great athlete. And when I was on the White Oak um, Country Club golf team, he used to regularly shellac us as uh, the, the head of the Black Knight team. So Governor Justice, we are delighted to have you. Welcome. Oh, please sit down, please. You know, I've known Pat forever, and Pat's getting older looking, isn't he? <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. What a great friend, and what a great West Virginian. What a great day for me to be here. I mean, just think. You know, the chamber, the business summit, Think about this, even though I know we're going from pretty low levels, but West Virginia, second in the nation in GDP growth, first quarter. Now, if that's not good enough for you, I'm a Republican now. And happy to be that. Let me just go over just a few things, and I won't bore you. I won't put you to sleep. I'm a real believer that the good Lord gave you the ability to smile and to laugh, and we should do that because this is a tough journey in a lot of ways. Before I get too deep, I always want to clarify just one thing. Is there anybody here in room 4201? 4201, good deal. And the reason I say that, and I may have told you this before, but some short years ago, true as it can be, a lady from the front desk called my office and she said, Mr. Justice, we have an irate guest in 4201 and he's out of his mind, he's cussing every other word and he's screaming at the top of his lungs. How in the hell do I get out of this room? One door goes to the bathroom and the other door's got a do not disturb sign on it. <laughs> now that's true. So if you were in 4201, I would say get out quick because you would have a real brain drain going on. But let me get back to our state. I said back in the 
primary. I said we were going to have a movement in severance tax. Everyone looked at me like I was a three-eyed alien. But see, I really, really do know a few things because I've done so much and done so many things where you made about every mistake you can possibly make. I felt like that coal was going to get better. I felt like with the election, hopefully, of the president we have today, that things were going to get better. Now, I knew that gas was going to get better. The long and the short of it is, it has happened. Will it stay that way forevermore? I think it'll stay good. And the reason I think it'll stay good is real simple. The, the highest metallurgical production we ever had in our state, I think, is about 40 million tons. We, we sputtered in the low teens. I really believe that you're going to see us level off at 30 or more. Today prices, and I'm a conservative guy, I'm not this pie in the sky guy, but prices are around 110 to 115, maybe even 120 dollars FOB mine short term. Well, believe me, be any of us in the coal business would say, freeze it right there, and we're happy. Now, what's going to happen to thermal production? The lifting of regulations has no question helped, but it's not the answer. And I'm presenting a program every day almost. At 2.30 today, Secretary Perry called this morning and we're going to talk again at 2.30. Now it is so dynamic, it's unbelievable. When you talk about something that could shake up the world, and I'm not going to go into the piece by piece, it could shake up the world. Now, do I feel overly confident it's going to be done? No. It's too big. But do I feel overly confident that we have stabilized in our thermal production? I do. Do I feel like we have real opportunity to grow our gas severance? We do. We have to help our gas companies and help them with the obstacles that they face, making us absolutely competitive with the other states and move forward and they'll reward us too. Now, let me tell you this. On October the 7th, and today I understand by unanimous, unanimous vote, you passed to get totally behind the road referendum. Let me tell you this. I went to Welch. There were 75 people in the room, and I said, I want you to tell me the truth. Will you do that? Will you tell me anybody you've heard Anybody you've heard, whether it be an in-law or an outlaw or cousin, even crazy Harry that works down at the 7-Eleven, anybody you've heard that's going to vote against the road referendum, there wasn't a single, single hand. Now, I pushed them because I wanted them to say something like, well, I heard it's going to raise our taxes which is hocus pocus bull. It's not going to raise your taxes a dime. And absolutely, unequivocally, every single dime of the revenue is going to the roads. Every single dime. Now, I hope people don't get scared. It is absolutely imperative that we do this. This is our absolute chance to go somewhere and start lifting ourselves off. Now, let me say this. My sister's in Houston, Texas right now, and it's bad. It's really bad. We know what a thousand-year flood's all about, and it can be terrible. Now, let me just say this. With the refinery complexes and the manufacturing of the chemical base right there that are exposed to that level of potential hurricane and damage, it's unbelievable, isn't it? It's risk. It's real risk. 
You've got a guy that's sitting right here, Woody Thrasher. He's a superstar. And he's all behind this northern hub. He's all behind bringing the crackers. He's all behind bringing the manufacturing. And we have a voice and we have an ear in the White House. And I can tell you, they're behind it too. Now, can I promise that's going to happen tomorrow? Well, no. But for crying out loud, if you can't think it, you can surely never do it. And we've got a man with real passion here that believes, and so do I. And we've got people in our federal government that really believe. Now, I'll end by telling you just this. In this state, I said it way back when in the primary. I said, think about, think about living in a place, a place that had four of the most beautiful seasons on the planet. They aren't too severe. We don't get too much snow. It doesn't get too cold or too hot. Think about a place that's located within 600 miles of two-thirds of the population of this whole country. That's the market, guys. That's the market. And think about a place that abounds in natural resources off the chart. Now, we know coal, and we know oil and gas, but oftentimes you don't think about timber. You don't think about the contributions that our hardwoods make to this earth every year. Do you know in West Virginia alone, our hardwoods clean up what 21 coal-fired power plants would put into the air in carbon every year? We need to get something for that, and we can. And the other thing is our water. We have unreal water. So I tell you that everything is ripe and right in front of us. I have believed it since I was decided to run. I've got to have one thing from you and one thing alone. I've got to have your support wholeheartedly, naturally. But we've got to stop the political garbage. We've got to stop the political games. We've got to all be one, and that is West Virginians, wanting to do something other than to be dead last. Now, I say with great passion, I love you, and I embrace you, and I'm here to help you in every way I possibly can and you've got a 9,000 pound bulldog that's after it, and he'll stay after it. God bless you, thank you.